I hope you guys are excited like I am here. I'm feeling very generous, so I decided to kind of uh, create a series this week. We're gonna call this three packs of lending and three packs of lending matrix. And basically, what we're gonna be covering for, for free, absolutely for free, okay? So I'm trying to give you a reason to subscribe. You definitely need to subscribe, and now you definitely wanna hit that uh, bell button because you don't wanna miss what we're gonna be covering this week. I'm gonna start teaching you some lessons. Uh, we're gonna start educating you, uh, changing a little bit of some of the topics that we've been covering recently and really dive in and to the reason why I really started focusing on going hard on this YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't know, you should know, uh, my name is Brian, of course, with Broker Solutions Academy, and what we do is uh, I help business loan brokers understand and simplify the various funding products available in the marketplace so they can properly serve their clients, stop the endless confusion and self-defeating pointless rat race they're currently in, and grow their business while maximizing profits by teaching them how to become a real business loan broker and not just a glory referral partner so uh, I'm here to serve you business loan brokers I'm here to serve you if you're interested in jumping into the business loan industry or in general if you're just a business owner and trying to educate yourself on the different funding options that are available this is definitely the right channel for you but this week we're gonna be focusing on understanding this three paths of lending you know I even I wrote a book about it I, I can't see my book right now but I wrote a book about it you know what is it you know uh, we're gonna start that today we're gonna dive right deep and then every single day this week you heard that right okay Every single day, I'll be dropping a video this week, and we're gonna expand on this three paths of lending. We're gonna discuss some of the, uh, the lender matrix, as I call it, for each one of these lending paths. We're gonna dive real deep, and next week, after the course launch, oh man, okay, you definitely wanna stay tuned. I'm gonna get real deep and talk a little bit more about now how to utilize everything that I'm gonna teach you today in practice, how to evaluate your file or evaluate your client's file. Uh, for business credit is what we're gonna start with. And then we're gonna dive into real estate and really, I'm not just gonna talk about it, I'm gonna be about it. Like I always say, you know, we, we gotta learn what it is and then I'm gonna teach you how to apply it. Uh, but if you're interested, if you find any of these topics interesting, there's gonna be a link in the description, of course, where you can go ahead and sign up for a course where we're gonna teach you how to become a real business loan broker, not just a glorified referral agent, of course. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Let's jump right in. Talk about the three paths of lending, the concept of the three paths of lending, and we're gonna wrap it up and talk about the three paths of lending matrix. These documents that I go over in this video are gonna be available for you in the description for you to be able to download them so you can use them for free, for free, okay? I know you guys like free, so there you go. Three paths of lending. Of course, you're gonna get a free copy, signed copy of my book. I'm gonna make sure I send that over to you. Make sure we have your address. Uh, you're gonna get a free signed copy of my book, the new version, but let's get straight to it. Three paths of lending. and. What is it? You know, what is it about? What are we talking about, Brian? When you're talking about three paths of lending, we've heard you say this before, what do you mean? So in my years in the lending industry, I figured out the lending industry is just made to be so complicated. Uh, and after being in it for so many different years, starting as a mortgage broker, then going ahead and starting my own business brokerage firm, I figured out that it does not matter what the client is looking for, all lending products fall under these three different lending segments, okay? It doesn't matter if you're looking for a thousand dollars or a million dollars, uh, or even a billion dollars. People borrow money based on these three different lending segments, these three different lending paths. So you're going to hear me say that plenty of times. Uh, the first lending path is the credit-based lending, okay? Credit-based lending is any type of lending that the lender makes a decision solely based on the client's credit. Uh, we're either talking about business credit or we're talking about personal credit, but the decision, the underwriting is emphasized on the credit and the credit alone. Uh, one of the things that I've helped you in order to make sure uh, that you understand exactly what I'm talking about is uh, I went ahead and put all these uh, um, you know, uh, abbreviations, I'm sorry, I forgot the word there. Uh, there, so in case, you know, there's different marketing tactics that are used in order to confuse people about what people are talking about, but again, I want you to know that everything falls under these three different lending segments. So uh, personal credit, you might see PC, you might see UPL, unsecured personal line. Um, with business credit, you might see BCC, you might see UBL, you might see, you know, line of credit, uh, but these, are the only types of funding that are available when you're talking about credit-based funding. Now, there is such a thing as, when you're talking about a line of credit and a business credit line or a business credit card, this is, the, this is where the play, um, playing words kind of come into play, where you know, lenders kind of interchange. You know, so let me, 
let's make this make sense. Let's actually define what a line of credit is. Let's just slow down and talk about that first. A line of credit is an account given by a financial institution that gives you access to capital. That's simply what a line of credit is. It's just an account that you've been given access to by a financial institution that gives you access to capital. You know, now there's personal credit cards, which is a, a type of a line of credit. You know, uh, on the personal side as well, there is, you know, home equity line of credit. They call them HELOCs. That is a type of a line of credit. It's more, more so an asset-based line of credit, but follow me here. Um, you know, uh, and then there's business credit cards, as I mentioned. The business credit cards are a type of a line of credit. And there's also, you know, business lines of credit, where this is actually, you know, a, a line of credit is deployed not in credit card form, because uh, a business credit card, it, it comes in a credit card form. You know, we've all seen credit cards. You know, let me go ahead and put one in front of your screen there, okay? Uh, so that, that's a credit card. Um, and there is lines of credit that are deployed in a way where you get like convenience checks, you know, like business lines of credit, or you can just go in to the financial institution and cash out on the access that you have to credit. So uh, irregardless, these all fall into these sectors as far as funding which is the credit-based funding segment. So these abbreviations is just for you to understand if you ever see any of these, if you ever hear these words, personal line of credit, personal credit cards, business line of credit, business credit card, uh, just all pertains to lines of credit that fall under the credit-based uh, lending path. Moving forward, next thing you have is your revenue-based products, okay? Now, revenue-based products, keyword revenue, these are all different types of programs, funding options, uh, that the decision heavily weighs upon some type of income verification, okay? Uh, we're talking about bank statements. We're talking about financial statements. We're talking about tax return. We're talking about pay stubs. Uh, if we talk about in the uh, personal loan standpoint. But these is a type of financing that requires some form of income verification in order for you to qualify, okay? Uh, let's go over each one of these individually so we're, we're definitely on the same page. Number one, you have revenue term loans, okay? Revenue term loans is just, a, and then you, you, you know, RTL is what you might see out there. Revenue term loans are loans that are given to the business based on how much revenue that business brings in monthly, quarterly, yearly, depends on the letter's product, really. Uh, but that's what a revenue term loan. It's a loan that is given to the business based on that business's revenue, okay? Now, you're going to hear such a thing as a revenue line of credit, okay? This is it almost acts like the business line of credit. The major difference here, and this is the key, the key is a revenue line of credit, the decision as to what you qualify for and the, the terms and conditions of a revenue line of credit weighs on the revenue that the business makes, okay? So it's all based on the revenue. Unlike when we were talking about the business credit line over here, it's solely based on the business's credit or uh, personal credit might be involved there as well. But when we're talking about the revenue line of credit, a big percentage, uh, you know, uh, I always say this, credit is a compensating factor, but not the determining factor. The determining factor when you're talking about a revenue line of credit is the actual revenue that the business is actually generating. Okay, moving forward, MCAs, okay? Uh, you might hear Merchant Cash Advance. This is a, a product that hasn't been out there for long. You know, this thing kind of really got famous in 08 when banks stopped lending. Uh, and they pushed this thing out there. A lot of private lenders and private institutions, um, you know, started pushing this thing called uh, Merchant Cash Advance. A lot of, you know, I, I think in my opinion, a lot of hedge funds, a lot of that deep money, uh, they didn't have nowhere to really invest their money in. So they uh, saw this opportunity where banks were not lending and they came in with all this money and they charged a very high interest rate. It's, it's basically the payday loan of business industry. <laughs> okay, that's, that, that, that's the best way I can put it. Uh, a, a merchant cash advance is the payday loan of the business industry. You know, you probably know about what a payday loan is, okay? If not, Google it. Uh, we're not gonna talk about that right now. Um, moving on, uh, we have, and then keyword, I want you to always look at what I have on the side there. And the reason why I emphasize on this is because I don't want you guys to get confused when you're talking to people and, you know, they say, hey, uh, do you guys offer an MCA? Or do you guys have an RTL? You, you need to know what they have to talk about because this is an industry where people kind of 
come up with all these new terms and words to, to sound smart. I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to put it out there and be blunt. It, it, it's, it's, it's just to sound smart. It's just to sound, you know, maybe gimmicky, maybe um, uh, to have a different way of, of, of um, marketing what they're offering. But at the end of the day, every single loan, pro loan product that you see is going to fall under these three different segments. And it's going to fall, fall under these different options that I'm talking about right here. So MCAs, you want to uh, kind of pay attention to that. There's another thing called a purchase order financing. This is also a different type of revenue based type of financing. It's different in the sense that what a purchase order financing is. Okay. Uh, and I think I, you know, it'll help if I Google some of these terms so you guys will know purchase order financing so you know what what is it you know uh, and a purchase order financing uh, is a type of financing that is strictly based on a purchase order what is purchase order financing so we can see um, lender pay is so basically what the way this works is for example uh, let's just say you make candles you know or you um, make cups or you know you design these water bottle I really like this water bottle okay and you just started your business and Walmart really likes this water bottle and Walmart decides that, hey, Brian, um, you know, or Jeff, whatever your name is, or, you know, Elizabeth, we really like your water bottles and our clients really love it. We want to order a million water bottles and we need them here in about two months. Now, you just started this business. You know, it's going to cost you probably, let's just say, just for the sake of the, uh, the conversation here, let's just say it is going to cost you maybe 250000 or 200000 in order for you to satisfy Walmart's order of a million dollars, a million of these water bottles. So now, we're in between a rock and a hard place. Because number one, let's just say, let's assume you don't have the $200,000. But if you did have the $200,000, you wouldn't be able to make a pretty good profit by selling these to Walmart. We know Walmart is a legitimate business. Uh, they're all going to pay their bills. So you have kind of a problem here. And what happened is lenders eventually developed this product called a purchase order financing where now you can borrow money based on that purchase order from Walmart. You're going to go ahead and be like, okay, you have your PO, $1 million, $1 million PO. And you're going to go to a lender and say, hey, Mr. Lender, look, I have Walmart, one of the largest retail businesses in the world that wants to order a million dollars of my bottle, uh, my, my uh, bottle, um, water bottle, I should say. Okay. Now I don't have the money. Can you go ahead and front me the money? And then once I get a deliver on this order, when Walmart pays me, we can go ahead and split this profit. That's what a purchase order financing is. Uh, we're going to talk a little further how it works, but I need you to just understand how the me mechanics of it and how it works you know um if, if we can guys kind of slow down a little bit and actually get back to the other ones that we just talked about the merchant cash advance uh, how does that work a merchant cash advance is a type of funding where you are actually advanced money based on it, it's 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 funding based on future revenue it, 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 they look at what you've been able to do in the past and they advance you money and the payback is based on what you're going to be making in the future. It's, just, it's stuck on a percentage. We're going to talk a little further about it um, here once we talk about exactly how to process and underwrite merchant cash advance. But it's basically a loan that is advanced to you. That's why it's called an advanced based on the future generated you know, revenue of the business. It still falls under the revenue. You know, everything here falls under the revenue. Okay. Uh, another thing that we have here is account receivable financing. Okay. You, you're going to hear the word AR financing. Do you, you know, uh, uh, you might see a dot R, you know, but account receivable financing is a type of financing that you can get based on the type of receivables that your uh, company has. You know, for example, let's just say, we're talking about a, a, a gym uh, and a gym generally charges, you know, they charge all different types of fees, but they usually charge on a monthly basis. OK, and they usually have people under contract. Uh, let's just say that you're you're running a gym and your gym needs money. OK, and you have all these receivables, um, you know, and this can work just not for a gym, just but any business, you know, cell phone company, you know, uh, whatever it is, what type of, whatever type of business that holds a book of business of open invoices, you know, people that owe you money, uh, you can now sell these receivables to a lender and a lender will grant you or offer you a loan, a percentage 
or whatever you plan to get from this receivable. That's what account receivable financing is. So in essence, an account receivable allows companies to receive early payments on their outstanding invoices. If you have a company that has any outstanding invoices, uh, you can go ahead and receive an advance. It, it, you can kind of say it works very similar to a merchant cash advance, but it's completely different, okay? Trust me, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it uh, when we talk about the inner workings and how to process these applications. Uh, but uh, that's what an account receivable financing is. You need to understand that. And then there is such a thing called SBA loans. You, you know, if you don't know, uh, here in the, uh, there's such a thing called SBA. It's a, it's a small business administration. Um, it's it's uh, loans that are basically guaranteed by the government. Um, these are loans that you can get for either buying equipment, uh, buying real estate, as far as owner occupied real estate. There's just so many different types of, you know, you can use it for buying equipment. You can use it for short term funding. These are government loans that are issued to businesses uh there's some for export work there's you know for international trades there's cap lines we're going to go, go much more deeper into uh, all of these type of uh, loans but you need to know that sba is a type of loan uh it does fall under the revenue section because majority of the sba loans that i just mentioned here these are all different types of sba loans all of these loans do require for you to show proof or ability to be able to pay back based on revenue, based on income, okay? Revenue, income, same thing, okay? And then lastly, we have what we call personal loans. Uh, personal loans are loans that you borrow under your personal name. Uh, these loans do require that you have some type of proof of income or, or show an ability to pay, and you do that by either providing either pay stubs, uh, tax returns, uh, that that's about it. That's that's basically what you can show. You can show. You can sometimes some lenders will um, consider bank statements for simple self-employed borrowers. Uh, but generally, if you're self-employed, they probably want to see a full-year tax returns. Unless you have lenders that have uh, options for people that have do not have tax returns or just newly self-employed uh, individuals. But to just sum it up, revenue-based loans are loans that require some type of income verification for you to qualify. That's one thing that you need to understand. Uh, you need to understand that there's different types of revenue loans. There is revenue term loans, which is pretty much very similar to what a personal loan is. It's just literally a fixed rate loan with a fixed term, with a fixed monthly payment, and you just get a loan, they look at how much money you make, and they go ahead and give you this loan, and it has a fixed interest, fixed term, and a fixed monthly payment for you to pay back. A revenue line of credit, it's a line of credit with a set amount that you can tap into, pay it down. It is a revolving line. Uh, you can tap into it, pay it down. Uh, there are some non-revolving lines of credit. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, but generally, majority of the uh, lines of credit, revenue lines of credit are revolving lines. Revolving means you can use it, you pay it down, you use it, you pay it down, okay? Uh, so. Then we have purchase order financing. Purchase order financing is a type of financing that you can use uh, in order for you, if you have a specific order, going back to my $1 million uh, and, and this water bottle, if you have a specific order from a legitimate business and you're not able to get, not able to satisfy that order because of lack of funding, you can approach a purchase order financing lender and they'll be able to go ahead and advance some funds to you so you can go ahead and satisfy that order uh, so you can actually make a profit. So that's what a, a purchase order financing is. An account receivable financing is again, a type of financing where you can actually sell your receivables. Uh, you can sell your receivables and get an advance instead of having you to wait. Uh, moving on, there we're gonna talk about asset-based lending. You might hear it. ABL, you know, a client might call you be like, hey, do you guys offer ABLs, okay? Again, play on words here, all right? Uh, this, that simply stands for asset-based lending, okay? Um, the type of loans that fall under this segment are like real estate loans. Real estate loans, of course, to purchase any type of real estate, um, you know, uh, it is a specific asset that is collateralized with that loan, uh, so it, it's an asset-based loan. You know, you do require assets in order for you to get funded for this type of loan. Uh, there's equipment financing. And key word, I want you to notice that RE right next to real estate loan, you know, you might have a client, do you guys offer RE loans? You know, you're gonna get these emails, trust me. That's why I went ahead and I put these abbreviation on here so you guys know 
what these things are. They're very important for you to understand. Um, there's equipment financing, which is basically acts very similar to how you can finance a car. Uh, you go ahead and you put a deposit or a down payment if needed, and then after that, you, you have a fixed rate and you pay, you, you know, uh, you go ahead and you pay it off until, you know, your last payment. Uh, there's another way, especially in the business world, how you can finance an equipment and actually benefit from it without not legally owning it uh, until the lease is up, okay? Uh, and this is for financial tax reason. I'm not an accountant, so I'm not gonna get too much into the, um, the ins and outs of equipment leasing, but in essence, you can go ahead and let's just say uh, you have this equipment here. This is my remote for this camera that I'm talking on right now. And this equipment costs $50,000. You can go ahead and, and lease this equipment and it can, the company that leases to you maintain the legal ownership of the equipment, but they can lease it to you to a, for a certain period of time. Uh, and usually what happens is now you can, you know, I believe you can take those lease payments as tax write-off and there's other different tax benefits as to why this is done. Uh, but you, uh, majority of them, at the end of the lease, you have an option. You know, some of them have what they call a dollar buyback, where you can actually now purchase the leased equipment for a dollar. So you can kind of see how that is set up for business owners to actually benefit uh, from that as a way to finance an equipment. So you, you're gonna hear equipment financing, then you're gonna hear the term equipment leasing. Uh, the whole objective is the ability to be able to have somebody actually, you know, get access to an equipment. I don't want to say purchase. Yeah, you can, I can use the word purchase. Uh, it's to, to help somebody actually purchase a specific equipment. That's what, that's what that is there for. Moving on, you have what we call stock loans. Stock loans, uh, these are basically loans that are given to business and lenders collateralize on a specific stock or portfolio uh, of stocks. Uh, these have to be publicly traded stocks. You cannot collateralize on non-publicly traded stocks. Um, so they have to be publicly traded stocks. Each lender has their own requirement as to what type of stocks they want. There's some lenders uh, that focus more so on, um, you know, blue sheet stocks, which is just kind of the top tier companies. Uh, and some lenders don't. Uh, so it just really depends on the lender. Lastly, we have 401k financing. Um, 401k financing, or you might hear the term ROBS, uh, ROBS financing. And, and literally, th what this just means is uh, basically the type of financing that you can get based on your retirement uh, plan. And what ROBS uh, actually stands for, it stands for Roles as a Business Startup. So this is you know, a position where you actually have uh, a 401k which is basically, you know, a retirement account. Uh, let's just say you work for Walmart. Just, we were just talking about Walmart earlier, and you've worked for Walmart for 60 years, and now you want to go ahead and start your own business, but you have this 401k with Walmart. Let's just say you saved up a good $100,000. Uh, you can go ahead. They have uh, different lawyers and firms that will set up an actual 401k account on your new business, and a lot of people do not know that companies are allowed to actually tap into their 401k for any kind of business expenses for expansion and and there's there's a bunch of rules and stuff that we're going to cover a little bit later but uh that's what you need to know what uh, what robs is for what is it pertains to 401k financings uh is a where you can roll over your 401k for a startup that's what 401k financing is and it's the um what do you call it? Uh, the, the, the IRS code is ROBS, and you can do a Google search on that to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, there's another thing called settlement financing. You know, settlement financing is where you can get funding based on a particular, you know, uh, legal uh, win that you have or legal settlement that you have. You know, uh, generally, if you have a legal settlement, uh, it usually takes time before you can get your funding. Or if you have somebody that really desperately needs the funding, then they can tap into uh, settlement financing loans, which there's lenders out there that if you have a legal uh, case that you've won and you've been handed a significant amount of money, they'll go ahead and assist you with uh, getting you an advance and collateralizing on that specific settlement in order for you to get you the funding that you need. So anyway, these are all the different products that fall under asset-based lending, okay? Uh, these are all asset-based products, uh, and all of these require some type of collateral, uh, some type of valuable asset in order for you to be collateralized 
um, in order for you to receive this funding. So this is majority of the underwriting is focused on that specific asset, okay? Keyword, I said majority, because one of the things that I will tell you is credit is a compensating factor for all these different lending segments. You know, when you're talking about asset-based lending, credit does affect your rate. Equipment financing, credit does is, is going to affect your rate and your loan to value. Similar with the real estate funding, it will affect your loan to value. It will, it will affect the maximum loan to value. It will affect the rate. It can affect the term. Um, you know, so credit is definitely a compensating factor for all these different lending segments. It's not a disqualifying factor, but it's definitely a, a compensating factor. Even with revenue loans, revenue lines of credit, merchant cash advance, all of these loans do require for the lender to look at your credit in order for you to qualify. So in essence, I want to kind of just zoom out and show you this is what we mean when we're talking about three paths of lending. Either you can fund your business or you can borrow money based on your credit either based on your income or either based on assets. Uh, so these are some other terms that you're going to hear about that all fall under this credit-based lending path, okay? Uh, you might hear something like working capital loans, you know, startup business loans or micro loans or franchise loans or business acquisition loans or venture capital, which we don't do. That's why it's highlighted in red. Uh, you might hear short-term loans, long-term loans, commercial loans, conventional loans, home equity line of credit, business grants, which we don't do. Uh, business grants are issued by the government, or there's a few different nonprofits that issue uh, grants out there as well. Majority of grants are issued by the government, um, but these are all the different other terms. But I don't want you to ever forget everything falls under these three different lending paths: credit-based, revenue-based, asset-based lending as it pertains to debt financing. Uh, so let me just kind of bring, bring that in as well, because there's, uh, there's different types of financing. There is what we call debt financing, which is the industry that you're gonna be getting in. You're selling debt. That's basically what you're doing. You're selling debt. Uh, and then there is equity-based financing. You know, This is where you're talking about the venture capitals, where uh, they give you some money and they're gonna be taking a percentage of equity of the business that you own. So these are all um, venture capitals and then business grants are usually money that is given to you uh, as, um, you know, with no repayment. Uh, and, and, and again, that's not something that we really tap into. Uh, what we focus on here is strictly debt financing and debt financing only. So by now, you should be a pro. You should know exactly where the three paths of lending are. You should explain, you should be able to know exactly what a client uh, you know, where they fit based on their funding needs, just with that knowledge that you just received right there. Thank you for joining me today, and hopefully you got some knowledge, uh, you know, you got some nuggets out of that video that you just watched. And as I promised you this week, we're going to be dropping these videos every single day this week, kind of educating you. Um, so maybe uh, uh, if you need to get inspired or if you just want to learn some of these concepts as I'm teaching you here, um, you'll be able to kind of get that. So. On tomorrow's course, on tomorrow's video, we're going to talk about the three, uh, what is the credit-based lending matrix. We're going to expand a little bit more about the credit-based matrix. We had an overall bird's-eye view on the three paths of lending. We talked about the three paths uh, of lending matrix. We're going to dissect a little bit. We're going to zoom right in and only focus on the, th uh, the credit-based lending matrix, which is really important. And then every single day this week, of course, we're going to dive into all the different other matrices. If you're a loan broker and any of this, you've, you haven't been taught any of this, okay, you definitely want to stay tuned. Uh, okay, if you like some of this concept, definitely drop me a like you know by now if you haven't subscribed something is wrong with you stop being a hater and hit the subscribe button but i appreciate your time either way thank you so much i'll see you in the next video